Hello, I'm Marsha Ogden. Welcome to my podcast, Directory of a Dream Life 50 Plus. It's for anyone who's passed that milestone, like me by a long chalk, and who, like me, has realised that we could be on this earth for another 30 or 40 years. So let's make the best of it. Hi, it's Marsha again. And welcome to episode 5 of Directory of a Dream Life 50 Plus. Today's episode is called How the Impossible Wasn't. Are you wondering what I'm talking about? Great, because I haven't got a guest this week, I am going to talk about myself. This last week, just gone, was the second anniversary of something big for me. And I'll tell you all about it in a moment. Have you heard the inspirational quote, getting your life together requires a level of honesty you can't imagine. There's nothing easy about realising that you're the one that's been holding you back the whole time. Let me tell you, this is true. Two years ago this week, I had my last taste of alcohol. I know, if you know me, you will find that hard to believe. I still can't get my head around it. Don't know how it's happened. Well, I do. I'm going to tell you. But you know what I mean. I don't know where you are on the spectrum of drinking, but I drank wine every single day. And I never, in my wildest dreams, thought about giving up. I also never considered the possibility of a life without wine because once I'd got into the habit of drinking wine all the time at every occasion, I knew I had zero willpower and wouldn't be able to give up. But I did. And I'll tell you what, it was much easier than I ever expected it to be. Still, people could say to me, Oh, you're doing really well with that. I'm not doing really well. I've just stopped drinking and it is no effort at all. I'll tell you more about how I did it after the first of this week's life hacks. My husband Gary gave me this one and he heard it on Radio 2. Do you shred your personal documents from home? Or do you shred any kind of paper? Well, apparently, the bin men have a problem taking it because it jams up the machines. So, here's a little hint. Soak it all in water. And then, remember when we used to do papier-mâché at school? Well, you can play at that again. Because you just mould it around something flower pot shaped. And let it dry. Paint it. And you've got some nice little biodegradable, environment-friendly flower pots. You're welcome. Now, before you think, oh, that's so boring. You must stay in all the time. Life must be so dull. Let me tell you, I have socialised more than ever and I am having a ball. I'll just give you a quick list of some of the things that became very obvious very quickly. When I go out, I can dance like no one's watching because they're not, they're all too drunk. I can keep my high heels on all night. I can remember what everyone said. I don't regret anything I said. I don't have a hangover. I get a good night's sleep. When I've had enough, I leave when I want to. I don't have to wait around for people to give me a lift home. I can jump into my car, which is parked outside the door, instead of waiting for a taxi. I don't need to pay for taxis. I pay about 30p a drink, which is less than 50 cents if you're not in the UK, for a soda water instead of £4.50 a drink. But it's not restricted to soda water, let me tell you. I'll talk about that later. I can put all the money I saved on my night out into a pot. I can count what's in the pot. 
and then book my next extra holiday. I've been on two extra cruises since I gave up. I'm feeling very proud of myself. When I drive the morning after, I'm not worrying about whether I'm still over the limit. And I have enough energy to tackle anything that the day has got in store for me. It's only now that I've passed over to the other side, if you like, that I can see alcohol for what it is. And in this world today of political correctness, human rights, and in some cases, this overzealousness over health and safety regulations, why are we encouraged to give control of our otherwise intelligent, educated minds to an addictive, poisonous drug? It is a poisonous, addictive drug mixed with sugar and flavouring. I'm not telling you off because if you are a drinker, you'll just dismiss what I'm saying anyway. I would. But it's not our fault that we feel like that. Social media and the media in general definitely do not give us the impression that drinking alcohol is a slippery slope to nowhere. Having a gathering, have wine, beer, gin, cocktails. A sad time? Same. Happy time? Same. Need confidence? Again, wine, gin, beer, cocktails. Stressed? Have wine, beer, gin, cocktails. And so it goes on. Have you tried to spot a TV programme that doesn't include a scene where the characters are pouring an alcoholic drink? Or scrolling down your Facebook feed without noticing a mummy juice meme? But how do you know if you're addicted? Well, I would say if you always have wine at a particular event or point in the day, whether it's one glass, one bottle or one case, then you've got a habit. With me, I'd say that wine o'clock was getting earlier and earlier, especially if I was working from home. I knew I was drinking more than ever before. And one reason I knew is because over the last few years, I've been heavily into journaling, writing down in the morning what I, what I did and what happened the day before and setting daily goals, etc. And cutting down on wine had been an unachieved goal in that daily journal for about 18 months. So giving up wasn't even on the horizon for me, because let's face it, I couldn't honestly visualise a life without wine. So I had no intention of doing anything about it, really, had I? Zero willpower, and I didn't want to set myself up for a fall. Don't get me wrong, I wasn't at the stage where I was putting it on my cornflakes in the morning, or permanently drunk, or penniless, or homeless through alcohol addiction, thank goodness. I was where a lot of my friends are right at this moment, what I would call a functioning alcoholic. I believed what I needed to believe in order to justify my habit. I believed that red wine is good for you. Forget the moderation bit. I believed that non-drinkers are boring. They don't let themselves go. I believed that it's good for stress or tiredness or happiness or grief, or socialising, or celebrating. I used to tell myself, well, there are people who've drunk all their lives and they're still as fit as a piddle. So I'm sure that's what I'll be like. And that it is a health and safety conscious world. So surely they wouldn't sell so much of it if it was really bad for you. The truth is, they're addicted as well, so no way are they going to take it off the shelves. So let me tell you how I almost effortlessly stopped drinking completely and changed my life for the better. So as far as I can remember, I think my road to recovery happened in two stages. The first one was I did start becoming aware that I was drinking a lot and when I took the time to sniff it and swish it around in my mouth, I wasn't getting oak and dark chocolate. I was getting, oh my God, why the hell am I drinking this? It's disgusting. 
but I couldn't stop because you forget it is addictive. So I would still carry on and finish the bottle. So that was already in my head. And I think that is what made me quite voluntarily during a visit to the doctors be honest about the amount I was drinking. And she recommended that I go for a liver scan. So, as I say, I think subconsciously I was wanting them to find something, I think, to scare myself into doing something about drinking. Anyway, I agreed to go. And to my surprise and the scan doctor's surprise, the result was fine. But I put that down to the fact that I'd had a good quality liver regenerating milk thistle supplement for years. Now, just because I'd owned up to the amount that I drank every day, a good liver scan result wasn't enough to stop the medics from advising me about the dangers of alcohol. So I braced myself for the lecture. But what shocked me wasn't anything that the doctor said. It was my own response to her that caught me off guard. She said, if I had given you a bad result today, would you have given up drinking? And to my horror, the answer that immediately and unexpectedly tumbled out of my mouth was, no, I don't think I could. What? Where the hell did that come from? I don't think I could give it up. I have no idea why I said that. I just, I, I was inwardly disappointed in myself because here I am, 50 odd years old of age and I was admitting that alcohol controlled me. How the hell had that happened? Remember that quote I mentioned at the beginning? You are basically your own worst enemy. You are what's holding you back. When I thought back over the years, I hadn't always needed to drink at every opportunity. I didn't think back to when you were a teenager, a young teenager. You'd never even had alcohol and you were happy. I used to be able to stop or abstain on certain days if I needed to. But the wine witch had somehow crept up on me and cast her spell. To the point now where all my daily activities were built around the accessibility of alcohol. And I needed to do something before I got sucked under the influence even more. Now a few days later, call this fate or law of attraction, whatever you want to call it. I found myself in front of an online programme of education around alcohol. A programme that didn't insist that I gave up wine. It didn't label me an alcoholic. It didn't suggest I went to the AA. And it didn't put any pressure on me to change my sorry ways. All I had to do was listen each day and do some written exercises that explored my relationship with alcohol. And bit by bit, it worked on my subconscious mind eliminating the craving for wine and the desire to drink became weaker and weaker till this makes my family laugh till just a sip of the stuff made my face screw up like I was chewing a really bitter lemon do you know how long it took from drinking at least a bottle of wine a night to not touching a drop well, I'm very proud to say that I had it all done and dusted in eight days and I haven't wanted to touch a drop since. Could it be forever? I know what you're thinking. Voice of an angel. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> drink, drink, drink. Blue eyes are not bright as stars when they're shining on me. Relapse is a common I might get tempted again, who knows? What I do know is that it would be impossible for me to unlearn what I already know. It would be impossible for me to take that uninformed view with regard to drinking alcohol again. It'll be impossible to forget how good my life has become in so many unexpected ways. And if my little story hasn't inspired you, consider this. alcohol 
is ethanol, which is the stuff that is in the antifreeze in your car radiator. You're just choosing to drink it with a little bit of flavouring, sugar and colours. I think everyone deserves to live their best life. And if you'd like to give this method a try, just click the link in the notes below. The good news is life on this side is blinking marvellous. And no, you don't have to drink gallons of Coke or orange juice or even soda water. I hate pop and I do still like the occasion of drinking from a wine glass. So you won't have noticed if you're a drinker because if you're like me, you look on for the highest percentage of fruit that you could possibly find. But there are some absolutely lovely non-alcoholic or de-alcoholised wines in the supermarket. Have a look at Tesco in particular. They've got um they've got a section just for non-alcoholic wines, and as supermarkets go, they have the best range. Alternatively, there's an absolutely gorgeous Prosecco alcohol free from Aldi and it's called 0, 0.0 available as a white or a rosé. I know you're not going to buy a non-alcoholic wine instead of a proper wine. Not until you've got rid of the craving from your subconscious but once you've got rid of it let me tell you the world is your oyster. Do whatever it takes to live your best life. It's worth the effort. You won't regret it. Cheers. The second of today's handy hints comes from my friend Tracy, who works at Mrs Lyon's Tea Room in Standish, Wigan. Now Tracy said she's been doing this for over 20 years. And to be honest, I remember this product from being a little girl. I didn't realise apparently it is quite trendy again now. What am I talking about? Star drops. Tracy can't believe that over the years we've all used so many different products to clean the house. The car, the windows, the paintwork, the laundry, upholstery, carpet, apparently everything can be cleaned with star drops. So there you have it. The second of this week's life hack. Thanks, Tracy. The Directory of a Dream Life 50 Plus podcast is created and produced by me, Marsha Ogden, and it's available across several platforms, so please keep listening. There are relevant links below in the show notes, along with links to followers on Instagram and Facebook. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, just drop me a line at marsha at gurgleit.com. That's M-A-R-C-H-I-A at G-U-R-G-L-E-I-T dot com. Or just leave a voice message on here with details of your topic. Have a fantastic week and I'll see you next time. P.S. Can you do a P.S. on here? Well, I've done it anyway. Don't forget to send in any hints and tips, life hacks that you want to share with us. Just record your voice message at www.anchor.fm forward slash ddl50 forward slash messages. I still can't say it. See you soon.